Hello everyone, welcome back to another session in Dentistry and More. Today we have a very interesting topic in human anatomy that is triangles of the neck. The topic is very important for exam point of view. It is very frequently asked a short note, short essay or a long essay because uh, we have a big anterior and posterior triangles. So the triangles of the neck could be a long essay or it could be anterior triangle or posterior triangle could be a short essay and the individual triangles such as digastric triangle and a very important carotid triangle or could be a muscular triangle occipital or any uh, individual triangle could be a short note so studying uh, triangles of neck is very easy only thing you need to understand the anatomy so you can easily make out the boundaries and the content of this individual triangle so let's learn the triangles of the neck so before moving on to the anterior and posterior triangles we need to learn some anatomical landmarks and structures so it will be very easy to understand the boundaries uh, of the individual and anterior and posterior triangle. So the structures are we need to learn three bones, four muscles and two imaginary lines. So the muscles are the trapezius muscle which is present at the back of the neck and the sternocleidomastoid which is starting from the uh, clavicle and ending to mastoid and uh, occipital bone and the omohyoid muscle which is starting from the hyoid bone which is uh, crossing the sternocleidomastoid which has two bellies that is a superior belly which is superior omohyoid and this is inferior omohyoid and the last muscle is digastric muscle which has two bellies again but which is known as anterior digastric and posterior digastric so these are the four muscles which divides the lateral side of neck into various triangles and the bones are one is mandible that is lower border of mandible the second one is hyoid bone and third one is clavicle okay so the muscles are trapezius sternocleidomastoid omohyoid digastric bones are mandible lower border of mandible hyoid bone and clavicle and two imaginary lines the first line is the anterior medial line that is a anterior part of the neck line and the second line is a line joining from the angle of mandible to the mastoid process it is the extension of this lower border of mandible so the, here it is the angle of mandible and from here to mastoid process that is an imaginary line okay now let's see the lateral side of neck so lateral side of neck the anterior lateral side it looks like a quadrilateral shape it looks like a quadrilateral shape okay with four boundaries okay so these four boundaries are uh, the superior boundary so this boundary is the base of the mandible and a line continued from the angle of mandible to the mastoid process so this is the base of the mandible and line continuing from angle of mandible to the mastoid process this is the superior boundary and the inferior boundary is the upper border of clavicle so this is the inferior boundary so i'm talking about this quadrilateral area okay so this is the inferior boundary and the anteriorly by the anterior median line this is the anterior median line okay the anterior median line it's the same structure i just uh, redrawn here with more detailing the quadrilateral shape the uh, superior border inferior border anterior border and the posterior border is the 
anterior part of trapezius muscle the anterior margin of trapezius muscle okay so this will be the quadrilateral area okay the quadrilateral area which has a superior border that is a base of the mandible and a line joining from angle of mandible to mastoid process anterior medial line upper border of clavicle and the anterior margin of trapezius line so why it is important because this quadrilateral area is divided by the sternocleidomastoid muscle okay so it is dividing the sternocleidomastoid muscle this area and it is dividing this quadrilateral shape into two triangles okay so you can see one triangle is here like this with base at the superior border and another triangle is here base is here okay so it is opposite one is this format and the another one is this format so the diagonal line or the separating line is sternocleidomastoid so this muscle separating the quadrilateral area into anterior triangle and posterior triangle so this is a posterior triangle and this is a anterior triangle hope you are clear with this so this was a quadrilateral area this was a quadrilateral area and it is divided into anterior triangle and posterior triangle like this this is the anterior triangle and this is the posterior triangle now let's see the anterior and posterior triangle the anterior triangle and posterior triangle now let's learn the anterior triangle boundaries okay anterior triangle boundaries the anterior part so this is the anterior triangle okay so anterior part is anterior the medial line is the anterior part okay and posteriorly by the anterior margin of sternocleidomastoid this is a sternocleidomastoid this is anterior margin this is a posterior margin so anteriorly by the anterior medial line posteriorly by the anterior margin of sternocleidomastoid and its apex is at the manubrium sterni so this is apex so this is the manubrium sterni where the clavicle meets the sternum so this point is the apex that is a manubrium sterni and its base is the inferior border of mandible okay so inferior border of mandible is the base anterior border is median anterior medial line posterior border is anterior margin of sternocleidomastoid and apex is manubrium sterni okay so this anterior triangle is further divided into digastric triangle carotid triangle muscular triangle and submental triangle okay that is anterior triangle is further divided into submental carotid digastric and muscular so the digastric muscles are dividing the space the omohyoid muscle is dividing the space and making it into four further individual triangles we are talking about anterior triangle now let's see we will come to one by one later now let's see the posterior triangle so posterior triangle posterior triangle which has having boundaries so what are the boundaries of posterior triangle posterior triangle anteriorly by sternocleidomastoid so this is the posterior triangle okay posterior triangle like this so anteriorly by the posterior border of sternocleidomastoid posteriorly by the anterior border of trapezius and 
the base or the inferior border is the middle third of clavicle okay so this is the middle third of clavicle that is the inferior border or base of this triangle okay and where is the apex the apex is between the attachment of sternocleidomastoid and trapezius to the occiput and it is often blunted okay so sometimes it is making this triangle a quadrilateral shape okay so this apex is sometimes blunted and making it a quadrilateral shape quadrilateral means four sides so it is not very pointed this sternocleidomastoid and this trapezius it is blunted not very pointed one so making the triangle a quadrilateral shape so that is a posterior triangle okay posterior triangle boundaries are the posterior border of sternocleidomastoid anteriorly posteriorly by the post anterior border of trapezius and inferiorly or base is the middle third of clavicle and the apex is the two muscles that is sternocleidomastoid and trapezius at the occiput and it is blunted to make the triangle a quadrilateral shape and the floor of the mouth the floor of the mouth is having a uh, prevertebral fascia and some muscles such as splenis capitis levator scapula and scalenus muscle and the roof of the posterior triangle is formed by investing layer of deep cervical fascia okay roof and floor you know this if it is a triangle if it is a triangle this is a floor and we should say this is a roof okay roof so you need to visualize in a three dimensional format it has a floor and roof okay so we'll start with the first triangle that is digastric triangle okay the digastric triangle boundaries the above the base of the mandible and its projection into the mastoid process so this is a digastric triangle this pink one which is between the anterior belly and posterior belly of digastric and the hyoid bone here the mandible and the line joining from angle of mandible to mastoid okay so above the angle or the base of the mandible and its projection to mastoid process and the posterior inferiorly by the posterior belly of digastric anterior inferiorly the anterior belly of digastric okay and the floor is formed by mylohyoid and hyoglossus muscle and which is also known as submandibular triangle because it contains submandibular gland and there is the contents include uh, submental mylohyoid arteries and nerves and uh, along with submandibular gland and also submandibular lymph nodes are present and um, the external carotid artery which is moving uh, deep to stylohyoid and also internal carotid artery internal jugular vein vagus nerve also lies deep to this external carotid artery and also styloglossus stalin uh, stylopharynges and also glossopharyngeal nerve is present so those are the contents of a uh, digastric triangle or submandibular triangle its boundaries are anterior inferiorly and posterior inferiorly by the anterior belly and posterior belly of digastric and the base by the lower border of mandible so that is about digastric triangle or submandibular triangle now we have submental triangle okay submental triangle is demarcated by the anterior belly of both digastric muscle its apex is at chin okay so here it is the apex it is like this apex is a chin and the base is the body of the hyoid bone okay this is a hyoid bone so base is here so it is like base is here 
this format here is the chin and this is the base hyoid bone this is the chin so what would be the other boundaries so it will be uh, the digastric muscle and the anterior midline okay so the floor is formed by mylohyoid muscles and the content includes lymph nodes and small veins so this is a very small triangle that is submental triangle which is starting from the base is the hyoid bone and apex is a chin so the boundaries are anterior midline anterior belly of digastric and the hyoid bone and apex is at chin okay and the content includes lymph nodes and small veins which unite form anterior jugular vein okay that is about submental triangle next we have the muscular triangle it is mainly composed of muscles that is why it got this name muscular triangle so muscular triangle so what what would be the boundaries of muscular triangle so muscular triangle again uh, anteriorly by the anterior medial line just like uh, the submental triangle and posterior superiorly this is the posterior superior border which is this one omohyoid muscle that is superior belly of omohyoid this is posterior superior and inferior posterior it is by the anterior margin of sternocleidomastoid so muscular triangle the boundaries are sternocleidomastoid and superior sternocleidomastoid and superior belly of omohyoid and anterior border of uh, anterior midline okay uh, which is known as uh, muscular triangle because it consists of lots of muscles such as omohyoid sternohyoid sternothyroid and thyrohyoid all muscles are intrahyoid muscles intrahyoid muscles means muscles which is present below the hyoid bone this is a hyoid bone which is present below the hyoid bone and all are present in this triangle which is that's why this triangle got that peculiar name muscular triangle so whenever you are um, explaining about or writing the answer for triangle uh, without diagram uh, you won't get any marks so you need to draw not very uh, detailed diagram at least you can mention it in triangular format with boundaries and uh, once you draw the picture with four muscles and the three bones it is very easy to uh, find out the boundaries even if you don't remember the exact uh, boundaries after drawing the picture you will easily understand the boundaries where exactly the floor comes uh, the roof comes and the anterior inferior anterior uh, posterior inferior border so such things it is very easy when you draw a picture of the triangle so that is about a uh, muscular triangle now we are moving on to a very important triangle that is carotid triangle so this is a carotid triangle so carotid triangle which is uh, bounded or boundaries are posteriorly by so carotid triangle is in this format posteriorly by the anterior border of sternocleidomastoid anterior inferiorly by the superior belly of omohyoid and superiorly by the stylohyoid and posterior belly of digastric so here both the muscles are present one is digastric that is posterior belly of digastric and stylohyoid muscle stylohyoid muscles which is starting from hyoid bone to the stylohyoid process so that is a posterior Mm, superior border and anterior inferior is the superior belly of omohyoid so carotid triangle is important because it has carotid sheath carotid sheath we have already learned so components of carotid sheath are external carotid artery internal carotid artery internal jugular vein and vagus nerve all are present in carotid triangle so it is very important triangle because it contains main arteries okay so uh, along with external carotid artery its uh, branches such as superior thyroid artery then lingual artery facial artery and occipital artery all are present here 
and uh, many of the veins such as superior thyroid lingual facial ascending pharyngeal uh, and occipital veins also present along with hypoglossal nerve so that is about carotid triangle and we finish the anterior triangles okay anterior triangle of neck that is submental carotid digastric and muscular this is submental from hyoid bone to chin with anterior belly of digastric and the anterior medial line carotid is sternocleidomastoid superior belly of homohyoid and posterior belly of digastric and stylohyoid then digastric anterior and posterior belly of digastric and the floor of the uh, lower border of mandible and line to mastoid process muscular superior belly of homohyoid sternocleidomastoid and anterior midline and the structures present in this triangles now we are moving on to the posterior triangle posterior triangle are uh, this format okay so posterior triangle boundaries we already discussed the middle part of clavicle posterior border of sternocleidomastoid anterior border of trapezius and joining here it might be a little quadrilateral in shape the posterior triangle is divided into two by the inferior belly of homohyoid into a larger and upper occipital triangle and the smaller and lower supraclavicular triangle this is supraclavicular triangle because it is present above the clavicle supra means above the clavicle supra means above we have learned this is intrahyoid muscles which is present in the muscular triangle which is below the hyoid bone okay this is supraclavicular muscle this is occipital triangle now let's learn the occipital triangle occipital triangle the boundaries are sternocleidomastoid trapezius inferior belly of homohyoid okay so it will be somewhat like this and occipital triangle which consists of uh, the most important nerve that is spinal accessory nerve which supplies all these muscles trapezius muscle and sternocleidomastoid all muscles supplied by the spinal accessory nerve spinal accessory nerve okay that is occipital triangle and it was also uh, having supraclavicular nerves and the next one is supraclavicular triangle okay its boundaries are the base is clavicle and the posterior border of sternocleidomastoid and inferior belly of homohyoid so supraclavicular triangle uh, it has uh, superficial and deep fascia and platysma uh, which is uh, crossing the supraclavicular nerves and it is also having subclavian vein and um, subclavian artery subclavian artery so this is also known as subclavian triangle because it is having subclavian artery and subclavian vein and also brachial plexus okay so three things subclavian artery and vein and brachial plexus all are present in supra clavicular triangle and also it has external jugular vein okay so these are the triangles of neck so i'll recap it we have four muscles three bones and two lines trapezius sternocleidomastoid digastric anterior and posterior belly and superior and inferior homohyoid 
belly of omohyoid mandible hyoid bone clavicle the anterior midline and the line joining from lower border of mandible to mastoid process so anteriorly we have four triangles submandible carotid digastric and muscular posteriorly we have occipital and supra clavicular so this is a digastric which has boundaries anterior and posterior belly of digastric lower border of mandible carotid which is having sternocleidomastoid superior belly of omohyoid stylohyoid and posterior belly of digastric digastric uh, then we have submental anterior midline then the hyoid bone and anterior belly of digastric muscular triangle anterior belly uh, anterior midline superior belly of omohyoid and sternocleidomastoid and its content okay carotid triangle is very very important because it has carotid sheath and uh, other structures posterior triangle is again it is somewhat quadrilateral shape as the apex is not very much pointed the fibers are blunted that is sternocleidoid and trapezius muscle fibers are blunted but the base is the middle part of clavicle so it is dividing into a bigger and larger Mm, upper occipital triangle and lower supra clavicular triangle which is also known as subclavian triangle because it has subclavian artery subclavian vein external jugular vein this is occipital triangle which has the most important nerve which is a spinal accessory nerve which supplies all these muscles that is a posterior triangle so this question might come as i mentioned it has uh, it can come as a bigger longer essay you need to draw the entire picture explain all the uh, triangles and its contents you can make a tabular uh, column and write about its boundaries then you could expect anterior triangle or posterior triangle as a short note or you could expect short note the carotid triangle is very important so the main point is make a quadrilateral shape divide into two then change into various triangles this is a submental triangle digastric triangle carotid triangle muscular triangle then again divide this occipital triangle and subclavian or supra clavicular triangle so understanding uh, the anatomy is very important to write the boundaries the borders very precisely because uh, you may you might get confused very easily only thing is you need to understand the anterior and posterior border of digastric this is superior and this is the inferior belly of omohyoid rest all uh, is very easy just two other muscles sternocleidomastoid and trapezius so that's about triangles of the neck hope you understood this so whenever you're writing this question always draw the picture okay i'll come up with a new topic in anatomy thank you